I'm joined today by Azim Azar, renowned innovator, strategist, and thought leader in all things technology and in particular artificial intelligence. Azim, welcome to Hogan Lovells. It's great to have you here. Richard, it's great to be here. Thank you. So, Michael McDonough, Bloomberg's chief economist, recently reported that they've identified that a number of publicly listed companies have begun to talk about AI in their earnings reports. And obviously, we've had companies like Google saying for a long time that they want to become an AI-centric business. But this idea seems to be something that's entering into the mainstream. Can you briefly explain what's driving this change? Well, absolutely. AI has been a bit of a technology disappointment for several decades. Uh, and a few years ago, a combination of some technical breakthroughs and the widespread av availability of digital data transformed what AI could do. And since that time, forward-thinking technology companies and entrepreneurs have ploughed headlong into artificial intelligence because really for the first time it seems to be able to meet up to its billing. Okay, so if we've got um, businesses, uh, mainstream businesses scrambling to adopt AI in order to stay relevant and keep up with the competition, does this mean we're just going to see a war for talent as everyone tries to get the people with the necessary skills in order to deploy these types of technologies? Yeah, I mean, I'm hearing rumours that salaries for the very top AI developers are exponentiating uh, at the moment. But if you're a, not a normal business, you can still get started uh, in using AI or machine learning tools because the large companies like Google and Amazon and IBM are making these sorts of tools available to any business. Uh, and, and so while you might not be on the absolute cutting edge of AI research, you might be into a profitable space of AI development and using it to improve your business. So AI that's accessible to all. AI that's accessible to all, yeah. Okay. So in a world where we're increasingly seeing more and more uses of AI, do you think that governments and regulators really understand the impact that these technologies are going to have on business and society more generally? Um, and how are they going to protect consumers and users from a new breed of cowboys? You know, I'm, I'm quite heartened by what I see. The Obama White House released a really good report at the end of 2016, and I know we've had a Lord's report and there are a couple of other things going on in the UK. Regulators tend to think about these things quite well, certainly compared to the politicians who often have their eye on different balls. And I think one area that perhaps we, we haven't touched on uh, is the risks that we face from having these dominant platforms like Facebook and Google that actually control the bulk of the data uh, that might be useful in many AI contexts. So there are going to be lots of questions, lots of consumer protection questions and regulatory questions. Uh, it's a mixed picture, but I'd give the, uh, the regulators a little bit of a thumbs up and be more concerned with what the political parties are saying. Yeah, I find it fascinating that we're in the midst of a general election campaign at the moment and new technology and the impact of disruptive technology in particular isn't really something that we're hearing politicians talk about. Obviously we're seeing a marked shift at the moment from the value of labour towards the value of capital and that's only going to be exacerbated as we move into an AI-centric world. So why is it, do you think, that politicians simply aren't talking about this? Well, I think what they're doing is they're talking about the symptom. And the symptom is rising populism. Why is there populism? There's populism because of some of these underlying shifts that you've talked about and due to automation, due to uh, value accreting to the very, very talented, due to value accreting to the most technology savvy companies. Uh, and those are the, the start of the root cause. And unfortunately, the, the politicians are chasing after the the football rather than positioning themselves to where it might be going next. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Thanks very much, Azim. Thanks, Richard. Cheers. Cheers.